they're not allowed to make any changes on it whatsoever. Um, because they'll just fuck it up. 50% of the time, which is half, we will fuck it up. He finds us. We have to pay him. They will fuck it up. Don't put your own flavor on it. Don't dumb it down. Don't do anything other than what is written on the paper. I mean, I know Nate's in debt with Tommy. Pretty bad. You get into a case of what we call the TTs, which is Tommy Trouble. He emotionally finds us. He, he gets in our faces, talks down to us, takes our food. There's food all over the Moog. Uh, we've had to replace it three times due to that, due to just food being inside the keys. I mean, it just turned out awful, so, um... It's turning out great, thanks to Tommy, I mean... I mean... And I think we succeeded with that because we've played it on many different formats and it does indeed play. It it plays. Your average Joe can just put on and vacuum his one bedroom apartment too. It's better than all the other Hot Nerds albums, mainly because I'm in the band now. We got a good producer. Uh, I found him on TV and uh, He's a great dude. He's a good guy. He's excited. He knows what he's doing. And I think he's going to help them channel what they want to do with this album. I think the new producer did a good job of capturing how we looked while recording the record onto hard disk and tape. He made me believe that I can, in fact, wear a crop top while I'm recording. And, you know, I felt like I had wings. He did a good job of taking us out, getting us new wardrobes to record this record with. I consider myself a humble drummer. Um, you know, I know I have my flaws and I'm not perfect and, you know, when somebody comes up to me and, and tells me I do a great job, you know, I'm, I'm just like, you know, I, I, I find it hard to believe, you know, I'm not waving any, you know, big red flags, you know, I'm this great, awesome drummer, you know. Tommy is always talking about himself, how good of a drummer he is, how good his hair looks. I don't think I'm always talking about my drumming, but people definitely talk about my drumming a lot. I'm a good drummer, I would say, on my bass drum. I'll work on my hands, play the drums, uh, drum piece. But I've been playing a long time, burning out my, my, the soles of my feet by my drum sets. A strap around my neck and, and my snare drum while I'm sitting there kicking. I try to be humble about it. <laughs> my technique starts with my footwork. I'll do my fucking taxes. I even got like a podcast. He took it upon himself to just whittle his own sticks. Damn good whittler. He's a whittler. first record was more of Nathan's input and Alia's and I believe that's the main reason why Tommy was unhappy with that. Tommy usually brings in um, his compositions, that's what he calls them, you can't call them a song, he calls them his compositions. Basically he comes in with these compositions, he calls them, and says, here, 
I actually write everything down in blood so they know I'm serious. They're not allowed to change fucking shit. In fact, I don't think the guy's ever even heard a record in his life. I own one CD, and that CD is a Cranberry CD. He kind of wanted the, the Hot Nerds album to sound kind of like zombie and linger mixed together. Best, best, best songs besides linger and zombie. Those are the only two that I don't like. Well, zomb I mean, on a bad day, rainy day, zombie and linger, you know, you can... Yeah, it's all right. There's pieces inside of him that he was not born with. I consider it more like a babysitter for the, for the manager because, like I said, he's, he's always at my house, he stays here, he disappears to others, but really he's just crossing the border and coming into Mexico to stay with me. His body is literally half metal. Nathan's been taken off every now and again. He's probably out fighting crime, I would assume. Just like any other half man, half cyborg would do. Because he is half metal. I don't know if you knew that. But what they don't know, and what Alia specifically doesn't know, is that there's so many restaurants down there that I go to that I just hoard to myself. Because she's got all these restaurants up here in the States that she goes to. And they all know her by name. And they walk in and it's, oh, Alia's here. And they give her food and that's cool. When we go to Mexico, I walk into a restaurant, and they're all, they saying stuff, I don't know what they're saying really, but they, they look very excited to see me. And, and they use a lot of hands, and they wave the knives, and the, the spatulas, and the spices at me, and, you know, then they, they give me a meal, and, and that's really my main goal of being down there, is going to these restaurants where people are. I think he's got something else going on down there. I think there's some restaurants he's not telling me about. She can read music, so that makes it easy, but... She's like constantly eating. Uh, so there's like burrito wrappers and teriyaki bowls and banana peels just strewed about the practice space. So um, if you can handle the smell and the garbage. I'm a modest eater, you know, I only have three meals a day, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, no snacks, I'm not a big snacker. Snack shelf. Pre-breakfast, breakfast, post-breakfast, post and there's lunch, a dinner, a post-dinner, and a dessert. Constant stops to Jack in a Box for a Munchie Box, or a Whopper, or a Famous Star. Uh, it's just, it's way too much. That lady not for you to tear through that burrito like a hungry bear. We tried talking to her, like we can't understand what she's saying because she has food in her mouth. You know, a midnight snack, but on the hour. And it's good to give her a wide berth because she is a fucking slob when it comes to eating. We need to get some more shirts for Alia because all of hers had food stains on them. I'm a big dieter. Are you going to eat that? If I'm gonna continue, I need, I need the carbs. You know, I gotta, I gotta carbo load. If, if you have more questions, I, you can have half.
that's coming out. What record? <laughs>